Hello everyone, today we're talking about how to choose an ice axe. We're going to go deep into different designs and how those designs are meant to function so that you can find the right ice axe for you. Hi there everyone, I'm Jason and thanks for joining us. How many times have you hikers experienced this? A snow field on your hike that looks sketchy because a fall and a slide could lead to serious injury. That was in August in Colorado. So if you're doing the Continental Divide Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail or other trails that hit higher altitudes, hitting a snow field isn't a particularly unusual occurrence. Of course, there are also those of you who are aspiring mountaineers and you're purposefully looking for snow-covered terrain. These are the times when you need an ice axe. A mountaineering ice axe fulfills two core functions, self-belay, or using it to keep you from falling, and self-arrest, to stop you from sliding all the way down the mountain if you do fall. And in our family, our kids love getting out in the snow and just plain old love their ice axes. Anything else you guys want to say about ice axes? Yeah, they're awesome! <laughs> so we've been introducing them to the right tools and skills to be safe now and in the future as their abilities and ambitions grow. There you go. Today though, we're going to focus on the equipment, talking about the different types of ice axes in order to help you choose the right one for you in your trips. To choose the right ice axe, we need to understand the anatomy of an ice axe so that we can talk about the differences between ice axes which are used for mountaineering, ice tools which are used for vertical and mixed climbing, that's climbing that's on both ice and rock, and hybrids which have some design components of both axes and tools. So do you guys remember the parts of an ice axe? Yeah. So, so, so let's start at the bottom. What's this called? This is called a spike. spike. What's this? Trigger. It's a trigger. Trigger? Yep. This, is, this is the main shaft. box. Shaft. It's called the shaft. Shaft. Yep. Then what's all of it put together called? Pit. No, all of it put together is the same thing as this. Head. It's the head. head? Yeah. So then what's at the front of the head? The front of the head would be pick mm -hmm. and add. Adds. Now that we have the basic components down, let's talk about some of the variation in design and construction. And we'll begin with the spike which you'll find on all mountaineering ice axes, but not on many ice tools, which tend to have ergonomic grips with no spike. That's because the premium is on being able to hang on to the tool rather than being able to take a streamlined shaft with a spike at the end and jab into the snow. That just doesn't come up on vertical climbing. And speaking of shafts, they come in various lengths. And the general rule is the steeper the incline, the shorter the shaft. As you pull the axe up and move it forward, the longer the shaft is, the higher you have to windmill your arm to get the spike to clear the surface. If I have a slope that's this far above my feet, with a long shafted axe, I need to windmill my arm all the way up here in order to get the spike to clear the surface in front of me. But with a shorter tool, I only have to bring my arm straight out, so I'm saving my shoulder muscles. Shafts also come in various degrees of bend. The simplest way to understand the bend in a shaft is that the more bend it has, the better it is for steeper or even overhanging climbing. If you watch me drive this pick into the low angled terrain, you can see that the pick is at least close to perpendicular to the slope when it hits the snow. But look at this very curved shaft. By the time the pick reaches the snow, it is actually pointing back towards me. So if that was hard snow or ice, the pick would just bounce off rather than stick into the surface. But if you move to an overhang, the bent shaft allows me to hang on while engaging my shoulders and my biceps rather than relying just on my grip strength. Notice that you can also get different curves to the pick. On traditional mountaineering axes, the curve is generally downward curved the whole way. As the climbing gets steeper, the pick is often given an inverted curve where it bends back up towards the end of the pick. This has the effect of getting the bottom point of the pick to be the most forward facing, truly the leading edge of the equipment, allowing you to better penetrate your climbing surface. 
So inverted picks are, again, for more technical and vertical climbing. But if the inverted pick is better for climbing, it is worse for self-arrest. We'll cover self-arrest in more detail in later videos, but suffice it to say that when you slip on steep snow, you want to jam the pick of your axe into the snow to stop your fall. The standard curve pick scoops the snow in front of it, making it less likely to cut through that snow that it's gathering up. Whereas the inverted pick bends back and away from the pull as you're trying to stop, making it much more likely to just keep slicing through the surface. Not all axes have an adze either. They can instead have a hammer. Traditional mountaineering axes have an adze, which allows you to cut steps and chop out platforms for stances and tents. The more technical and vertical the climbing, the more likely you are to find only hammers, which allow you to hammer in pitons, which are metal wedges that you pound into cracks in the rock. But also, hammers don't get in the way of some more advanced climbing techniques, and they're far less likely to severely damage your face if some fragile ice or some small rock ledges break, all of a sudden having your axe or tool pop back towards your face, the ads can do some serious damage. And finally, a few words about customization. If you only need to use your axe for brief time periods because it's late season snow fields that you're running into, you probably don't need to add any insulation to the top of your axe. But if you're gonna go through a lot of snow or you're gonna be out in the cold, the metal of your axe conducts, which means it also conducts cold when your spike is in the snow. So most mountaineers take closed cell foam, or mine has permaloft, and tape it to the head of their axe to keep some insulation between your gloved hand and the metal on the top of the axe. And leashes can be a good idea too, to allow you to really anchor in below your axe if you're also wearing a harness, or at the very least, to keep you from losing your axe if you happen to drop it as you're changing hands or doing some other technique. So to summarize, ice tools, again, used for vertical to overhanging climbing, tend to have more severe curves on them, they have shorter shafts, they don't necessarily have a spike, and they have inverted picks. They also almost exclusively have hammers. Traditional ice axes have standard curves on their picks, straight shafts, spikes, and adzes. Hybrids can then mix and match some of these elements. They almost always have a mild bend to them, but they can have standard or inverted picks, they have shorter lengths. They can also be quite short for like ski mountaineering. They will often make up for a lack of an ergonomic grip by having a trigger rest, and they come with both hammers and adzes. Now that you know why certain designs are better for certain applications, you can go about choosing your equipment. As we talked about, vertical terrain moves you out of ice axes and into the realm of ice tools. But for axes, when you're first starting out, you probably aren't tackling steep slopes. So a standard length axe, that is one that goes down to your ankle bone when you hold it naturally along your side, is probably the best length. You can get a mild curve to the shaft, but I'd also stick to standard curves in the pick, not an inverted curve. This will help you more with self-arrest, which is your primary safety consideration. As you get out more, the likelihood of you slipping on a slope that is still flat enough for self-arrest to even be possible starts to get pretty low. So you tend to migrate towards shorter hybrids with inverted picks to help you get up steep terrain. So for me, I use this Camp USA Corsa Alpine for just moderately inclined snow. I use this Petzl Gully for moderately technical climbing with steeper snow. And if I'm going to need to hook cracks in the rock, then I'll use a more robust Petzl Sumtech. An ice axe is a foundational piece of equipment for mountain travel, particularly in the winter and shoulder seasons. If you're worried about the weight, Yes, there's still an extra piece of metal, and that comes with a weight penalty, but they aren't nearly as heavy as they used to be. Axes and tools that are rated for very technical use are still weighing in at just over a pound, and that's because they have to be made of very strong materials because of all of the heavy use that they get when technically climbing. But things like this Camp USA Corsa Alpine is 55 centimeters and weighs in at 10 ounces, and this Petzl Gully is 45 centimeters and weighs nine ounces. So the ultralight options are actually getting pretty light. So like any risk, consider the likelihood of you wanting a piece of equipment, in this case, an ice axe, and the potential consequence if you don't have that equipment with you, and then make the call as to whether or not an axe is right for you. So let us know in the comment section if you have used or are thinking of using an ice axe for your travels. 
If you want additional information on this video and every video we produce, along with links to the equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce how-to videos and educational videos like this one, as well as short films about our family adventures, and we release something new every week. So if you have suggestions for content that you'd like to see, then you can drop those in the comments section too. In the meantime, keep enjoying yourself and keep on getting out into that big outside.